What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to stream audio from your Raspberry Pi to your local computer across the internet. In today's tutorial specifically, we'll be going over how to set up some open source software on our Raspberry Pi to allow us to create the audio stream. And we'll also be using some open source software on our local computer called VLC that will allow us to tune into this audio stream very seamlessly. And we'll be doing this in a matter of just a few steps. Even better than that, this is actually a no code solution. So contrary to many of my videos where I use Python code, in today's video, we'll be using no Python code to do this. So if writing code is not your forte, this is the video for you. And it is incredibly simple and I'll be showing you how to do it. We're we'll using a USB based microphone to actually record audio on our Raspberry Pi. This is really important because you actually can't record audio from the AUX cord on your Raspberry Pi. You do need a USB based one. I'll link the one I'm using in the description down below. It is relatively cheap and it's incredibly simple to use. You just plug it in. You do not have to do any setup whatsoever. So that being said, guys, I do not want to waste any of your time. Let's jump into the Raspberry Pi side of things to show you how to download the software and configure it to be able to create an audio stream that we can tune into on our local computer. But before we get into today's content for the video, I just want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel because believe it or not, 90% of my viewers watching this YouTube channel are not actually subscribed. And it would mean a lot even if a small portion of you guys hit that subscribe button because it is your support and the subscriptions and the likes that keeps this channel going and allows me to make more engaging content for the IoT community. So do not shy away. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't because trust me, there are much more useful tutorials that you will come across on this channel to help you with your coding IoT Raspberry Pi and Arduino journeys. And if not, later on you can change your mind and best of all, it is free to hit that button. So go ahead and hit it and let's jump back into the video. Okay, so first things first guys, we just want to sign into our Raspberry Pi. We'll be installing IceCast 2, which will allow us to create the media server that we can tune into from our local computer. And we'll be also installing another software called Dark Ice, which actually takes the audio from our USB microphone and funnels it into this server, okay? So now that we know that, we just want to go to our Raspberry Pi and open a terminal. This will allow us to install this Vito the sudo apt get command. So first things first, we, we typically want to do sudo apt get update to update the package installer on the Raspberry Pi. This is good practice to do before any project. Any new project is you just want to update the apt get installer. Now after that command, we have in conjunction this command, which will install icecast2. So really simple commands, and we could just go ahead and take what we have here and just click enter. So give that a moment. It does take a little bit to update and install IceCast. Okay, so it looks like IceCast successfully installed. So the first thing it's going to ask us is it says configure IceCast 2. Let's go to yes because we just want to do that through the UI. We'll just click yes. Localhost, that is fine. So we could just click down on our keyboard and click OK. The password is HackMe. So that is the standard password that comes for IceCast 2. We can click OK. And once again, okay. So we'll just let them configure all the parameters as is. Okay. And it looks like IceCast is almost done installing. You can ignore that error. That's not really an error. And it looks like IceCast 2 was successfully installed on our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now that we have IceCast installed, which will be our media server, next we just want to install Dark Ice, as we mentioned, which is another open source software, which will take our audio and funnel it into the media server on IceCast. So we could just do very similar command and that is sudo apt get install. In this case, it is dark ice. So nothing fancy here and it should install quickly. I already installed it before. And the next thing we want to do is we have to configure some parameters in dark ice. So we can actually create a config file using sudo nano. Nano is just a text editor in the terminal. So we're not doing any coding as promised. So just run this exact command and it will create an empty file here if you've never used this file before. And I already have what we need on our clip on our on my clipboard. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste that here. And you can see we just have some parameters for our dark ice config. We're not going to get into too much detail about these parameters exactly. We just have some simple things for our input. So our device, we have some sampling rate bits per sample channel. You can play around with these if you need specifics for your audio inputs. 
I just kept these, these are pretty generic there. And another important thing is you could see this IceCast 2. So this is the segment of the config that will actually point our audio into that IceCast media server. So we have some parameters here, as you can see. An important one we have to keep in mind is that it is on ports 8000. So when we access it from our local computer, we actually have to point at port 8000. And we also have a password here and a as you can see, the password is the same as the password we set up in our IceCast, so make sure that matches as well. And we have this mount point as well. So when we use VLC on our local computer, it will ask for that mount point. So that mount point is also very important. So that's pretty much all we have to know in terms of this file. So once you have it, you can save it. You can just type Control X and save modified buffer. Just type Y on the keyboard and then type Enter or Return. So that dark ice is ready to go. And before we actually run dark ice, one thing I want to show you is if you've never gotten it before, we need the IP address of our Raspberry Pi on our local network. If you watch this channel before, we've talked about this value a lot. So you can just type if config because we need this IP address to point our local computer on the internet to our Raspberry Pi. So make sure your Raspberry Pi is connected to the same internet as the computer you want to stream audio from. So this is the IP address in my case. Just go down to this WLAN section and remember this IP address or copy it for later. That is an important value we will need. And finally, we can run dark ice. So let me just get the command. I actually forgot it at the top of my head. I think it's just dark ice. I believe it's just dark ice. So I'm just going to trust my instincts here. So to actually run dark ice and to initiate that server on a Raspberry Pi, we could just literally type in dark ice. Okay, and if we did everything properly, so it is running now, so that means Dark Ice is running. So we're done with the Raspberry Pi side of things. We installed all the open source software we need. Now we just have to install some open source software on our local computer, whether it is MacBook or Windows, and we will be using something called VLC, which will allow us to tune into this IceCast server to be able to hear the audio stream from our microphone. Okay, so now that we have everything on our Raspberry Pi, we just want to go to our local computer. We want to open a web browser and we could just search VLC, which is the open source software we'll be using to actually stream the audio from our Raspberry Pi USB microphone. So just search that and we can just open the first link here and we could just go ahead and download VLC. I already did it. Pretty straightforward download process and installation process. So I'm not going to go over that specifically. As you could see, it knows right away I'm on a Mac. So that is nice. So we do not have to go and select a specific one by ourselves. And it does have other configurations for Linux and other systems, so that's pretty cool. Really popular software and incredibly easy to use. So once we have that and we walk through the installation process after opening the DMG and what's not, we can just go ahead and actually open VLC Viewer. So let's go ahead and, I don't know why I keep saying Viewer, it's just VLC. I'm thinking of another software that has a Viewer in the end. So now that we are in VLC Media Player, we can actually open media. So we want to click this, but before I click this, I actually want to take my USB based microphone, which I'm recording this video in, and I want to switch it and connect it to my Raspberry Pi. So we will be back in a second once I set that up. Okay, so I actually moved closer to my Raspberry Pi and I plugged in the USB microphone and I tried recording this segment of the video. But what happened was it was echoing because it was hearing what I was saying on my microphone and just streaming it back to my headphones. And then you guys were hearing the audio twice, so it didn't sound nice. So I'm just going to show you exactly what you need to do for the final step to actually stream the audio. It's really simple, but unfortunately I couldn't prove it to you guys, but trust me that it did work. So if your USB based microphone is connected to your Raspberry Pi, we could just go ahead and click open media there. We can go to the network section and we just want to point to the media server that we configured for IceCast and we just have the parameters here. So we have the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, which we got from the if config section on our setup on our Raspberry Pi, which I showed you before. We have the port, which we define as 8000. And finally, we have the my stream, which is the, the mount. And once we have that, if you did everything properly, you should be able, you should be able to hit open. And once you hit open, you will start hearing audio if everything is good in terms of the hardware and the setup. Okay, so I did that and it did work. But once again, we're not going to prove that exactly because I had no ability to or else you guys would hear echoing and you would not be able to decipher anything I was saying at that point. Another thing you could do, which is also interesting is you don't necessarily have to use VLC media player. You can just copy and paste this URL into Chrome. However, one thing I notice is when you 
copy and paste it into Chrome, what will happen is it'll open this thing and you could play it, but the latency is much higher than you would get on VLC. And the reason I think that is, is because VLC is probably optimized around this sort of application, whereas Chrome handling the, the, the information from the server is not necessarily optimal and it has to deal with more overhead, which will lead to more latency in the stream. So I noticed with Chrome, the latency can be up to 10 seconds, whereas when I do it with VLC, the latency will be just a few seconds. And keep in mind as well, a latency of two to 10 seconds is typically good practice with this sort of application. So do not be disheartened if your latency is just a matter of a few seconds because that's actually pretty good for this sort of audio streaming. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up for today's video. Sorry about the last part where I couldn't exactly prove it to you that it's working, but trust me, it was after you hit that button and you should have been able to stream audio from your Raspberry Pi after you followed all the steps we went over in today's tutorial. If you managed to be able to, please consider subscribing to the channel if I saved you any bit of time or if you learned something new, because as I mentioned at the beginning, your support means everything and every subscription I get to this channel allows me to create more engaging content for the community. Now, another thing I realize is making these tutorials, a lot of people's hardware and iOS differ considerably. So if you are having issues in your installation or some of these steps did not work for you, please let me know in the comment section down below. I am generally really good at getting back to comments and I pretty much get to 100% of my comments. So I will respond to you eventually and try my best to help you as I can. You can also reach out to me on Instagram or on my email if you want to be more specific and I will try to get back to you there as well. If you guys have any suggestions for the next video or you want to see more in this audio streaming series, please let me know in the comment section down below because I've mentioned many times that a lot of videos or a lot of video ideas I get are from you guys in the comments. So do not shy away from any suggestions because there is a high chance if it's a good one, I will make it in an upcoming series or video. So enough being said, guys, I hope you learned something again. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.